Hey, how's it going? And welcome back to another Creation Club video. And today we'll be looking at Hendraheim, which is a Nordic Hall player home in the Reach, just north of Bile Gulch Mine. And make sure you watch the end as I have some additional info that you may well find very helpful. So anyway, the mod was created by Eleonora, the same person that brought you Tundra Homestead, Mere Watchtower and Shadowfoot Sanctum for Creation Club and many more extremely high quality mods on Nexus etc. Her work usually is of a very high standard so expectations should be high with this one. Okay, so let's get down to business. The mod comes in at 400 credits which is around $4 or £3 in real money. You can't buy this property, but you must earn the deed to this ancient Nordic Hall by trial of combat. As usual, the quest automatically begins upon downloading. However, you must await a courier's delivery, more than likely with the whole capital. I found mine in Whiterun. And read the note given to you. It will direct you to Hendraheim, which, as mentioned before, is just north of Bile Gulch Mine and southwest of Fort Sungard. Just as an aside, this location is the only one to make use of the wooden castle map icon, which is actually present but unused in the base game. It was originally designed to be used by High Moon Hall, the White Hall and the Falkreath Jarl's Longhouse, but never was for some reason. Don't know why I wanted to mention that, but I just did, and now you know too. Oh yeah, it may be worth noting that the route I took brought me face to face with a bear quite close to the home, which I presume uh, will respawn. I haven't checked. I'm mentioning this because it may or may not impact on a non-essential husband or wife. Anyway, once there you'll meet Idvina Shieldhearth who is a Nord warrior that owns Hendraheim. She can be found at sweeping up stables at the front of the home. Now when you speak to her, no matter what option is chosen, she will pick up a Nordic sword of scorching and her armour and attack you. Now she's quite a tough opponent, especially for those at low levels, so make sure you're prepared. Once killed, she will drop the key to Hendraheim and it will allow you to gain ownership of the house and complete the quest. You'll also pick up a decent set of armour and the aforementioned Nordic sword, uh, sword of Scorching. It's worth noting that she will despawn, a uh, despawn, sorry, as soon as you enter the house. So make sure you lose her body just before going inside. And apparently there have been a few reports of a few bugs where you can't get the key. These may have been sorted by now, but I strongly suggest you save before you first talk to her. So before I walk you through the inside, I'll leave you with all the pretty shots. Catch you at the other side.
Okay, so we've seen all the lovely shots and uh, let's take a quick walk around. Now, the first thing you do as you enter the home uh, is you look right and left, you've got a weapon racks there and a couple of things that really strike you straight away. And one is the size. It's uh, really big and it really could be uh, a Nordic uh, Warriors Hall. Uh, another thing is the lighting, superb lighting. And Eleonora always gets this right. Um, got alchemy and enchanting tables. Now, first thing about this, I will say there doesn't seem enough uh, storage around them and different containers so you can do uh, like a, um, a crafting run. Um, and hooking to the right, you've got your mannequins, display cases, shield racks and weapon racks, blah, blah, blah. Uh, now, one of the display cases has a broken sword in it that can't be removed for some reason. Don't know why that is, but hey, it is what it is. Don't know what this thing here is. I'm guessing it's where your dogs will sleep or maybe your followers, even though there's no bed there. Um, and just ahead, he's got where you eat. It's kind of got like a, the whole Last Supper vibe going on. It's a really cool little place, actually. And to your left and to right of this, there's just kind of dead space and a few storage bits and bobs in there. Okay, and moving on, we've got the oven. And if anyone's seen my video on... Uh, cooking in Skyrim, you know you definitely want one of these. Now, as far as I'm aware, uh, I tested a few of the containers, everything's safe for storage. Um, but let me know in the comments below if you do have any issues with that, I couldn't test absolutely everything. And then you've got a bar area where you can feed mead to everyone. And hooking around here, yeah, you've got your cooking pots on the spit there. You've got your bedroom, which is family friendly. Uh, you've got a couple of kids' beds there. I'm assuming they're the kids' beds, they look like it. Um, don't know where your followers sleep in this place. Because this is the only bedroom. Anyway, you've got kiddie stuff, you've got a practice dummy. And the usual paraphernalia, you've got your writing desk, you've got safes and storage, uh, etc. Um, this is probably for me the worst room in the uh, in the home bookcase there. Um, the bed does give you the well rested bonus. It's just very uh, cramped and cluttered. You can't even get down one side of the bed. Um, bit disappointing, to be honest with you. And moving on. And if you look around, there's always like places where you can uh, store stuff here and there. But one thing that really strikes me on this, it, it's very difficult to get organised in this place, I think. So, where we take a little trip down the stairs. And you come to your trophy room now. The good and maybe even the bad thing, I'm not really sure yet, um, about this. It's no loading screen, opens straight up, all one cell. Um, and I want to say maybe the bad thing, uh, works fine for me, but maybe there's an issue with um, people who, who are basically using a potato and you may get hit with, the, with your frame rates once you've got this fully um, loaded out. Place of dragon claws, masks, all your bits and bobs. Doesn't strike me as quite a as good um, a trophy room as uh, Shadowfoot Sanctum. It may be. I haven't done any counting stuff. But Shadowfoot Sanctum seemed to be a little bit better. Don't know why. Maybe it's just me. Anyway, plenty of stuff is good enough. Now I'm sure some people are going to um, uh, say there's not enough weapon racks and shield racks around the hall. I'm, in my opinion, there's plenty. To be honest with you. But of course, that's a personal opinion. But one thing, if you're an avid collector, you might want to get, download another mod, um, which enables you to display everything. Um, you certainly won't be able to in this place. But as I said, more than enough. So, that's it. That's uh, Hendraheim Hall. And, uh, yeah. I think all it's, it's a very attractive building. However, I do have some issues, so uh, let's go to my uh, final thoughts. 
Okay, so what do I think of this mod? And uh, I think I'll start with the positives. This home is high quality, which is typical of any Eleonora mod. Attention to detail is great, and I want to draw particular attention to the lighting, which is spot on. I can't tell you how many decent player homes I've wanted to review, but I don't, as this insistence of having uh, them too dark make them really unpleasant places to be for day-to-day -day gameplay. But she's got it absolutely right. I like the open hall, plenty of space to move around in, and I believe it is family friendly, though I haven't checked it out myself with this character as she's staying firmly single. You get a real sense this genuinely could be a hall for a Nordic Thane or Earl etc filled with warriors and noise, um, a real buzzy place. It has everything you need, alchemy, an enchanting table, all the cooking and smithing gear you need in the game. And the trophy room is great, though I'm sure there'll be a few that want more mannequins and or weapon racks, etc. But to me, there's plenty. And clearly this home is following in the tradition of Creation Club, offering homes for specific playstyles. A general home with Tundra Homestead, a Thieves home, Shadowfoot Sanctum, a Mage's home in Mirwatch. And this is clearly for a Nordic warrior. And it really does work actually. And that is this player home's major strength. But sadly, it's also its major weakness, as it makes it fairly unappealing for any other playstyle. Now let me explain a few issues I have. The first and most important one, for me anyway, is the crafting. Now in Mirwatch Tower, the crafting area was spot on, absolutely perfect. The smithing, enchanting and alchemy were all together in close, uh, close proximity. Each had sufficient storage so you could get organised for those long crafting sessions. And I had such high hopes this homes after Mirwatch. Uh, sadly, it's gone back to separating smithing from the alchemy and enchanting. Uh, none of which, by the way, has sufficient storage in my opinion. Uh, while we're at it, very little in the trophy room as well. Now I'm not saying it's a deal breaker, but it's uh, still a disappointment. And a huge omission is there's absolutely nowhere to grow food or ingredients. There should be planters everywhere inside this hall and a copious number of growing spots outside. Now I have found mods that put planters near the smithy and there's some for all platforms and you'll find the links to those in the video description. So make sure you check them out. I would also expect to see cows and chickens and possibly even horses in abandon wandering around the, the outside Side, but there's just simply a manicured but rocky lawn devoid of utility or charm. And that brings me to the bedroom. Despite the fact it's reasonably well, well equipped, it's cramped and cluttered, you can't even get down one side of the bed. I'd be so much happier if it's simply been a copy and paste of the half fire bedroom rather than this. That would have worked far, far better. Now, if you can recall, I've mentioned you really get a sense that this genuinely could be a hall for a Nordic Thane or an Earl etc filled with warriors and bards and noise well you're gonna kind of have to imagine it this is what I could do with Lakeview Manor guards bards traders stewards kids spouse and animals etc and this is what Hendraheim should feel like Instead, it kind of feels like this. Now, don't get me wrong, I like this home, I really do. It's nicely done with great lighting and it's, perf it's a perfectly decent player home. My issue is that you're being asked to pay for something that isn't any better than hundreds of free mods out there. I mean, look at Ryx End, for example. It knocks this out of the park at every level by you can't move your family there and that's a point and as I mentioned before I'm going to start holding creation club mods to a higher standard as we're asked to pay for them you shouldn't settle for okay you should get wow and especially at the prices being asked even more so for the people that can't get free mods or at least limited with mods they can get so I'll finish up with this. Now this is really a decent home and if it suits your place or you just like it then grab it. I doubt you'd be disappointed. Now my advice would be if you want a creation club home for gameplay purposes Mere Watch is a better bet with that superb crafting area. Now if any modder can add the stuff that I have in my half fire homes to Hendraheim 
then without a doubt, this would be my go-to player home. No doubt about it. And there's a link uh, to Ryx End and my modded half my videos in the description for those that you're interested. But uh, anyway, unless that happens, I'd recommend you stick to a half my home and just mod it. Anyway, rant over. This is just my opinion. But all that matters is that I've shown you enough for you to decide whether to spend your hard-earned pennies or not. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you later. Love you.